good afternoon, all of you. Uh, thanks, Susan, for this opportunity for me to speak here and talk about issues of economic competitiveness and uh, trying to relate it to mobility. Uh, in fact, uh, what I'm really going to uh, talk about is like how transportation is going to play a critical role in developing, developing economies. Uh, in fact, if you really look at this whole huge problem, uh, we've actually been talking about this whole thing since last one day uh, from a developed world perspective. We have not really looked at the issue of uh, what the developing world is actually facing. Uh, in fact, if you really look at this huge issue, uh, the developing world has a far, far different way of really tackling this problem, and they have to tackle it in a different way. The models that we have really been talking about here uh, probably will not be applicable to the uh, developing world. A simple thing, if, if you really look at uh, what we actually shared, we shared one of the statistics that 3 billion people are actually going to be living in urban slums, and most of these 3 billion people are actually going to be in the developing world. Uh, when I actually talk about these 3 billion people, they are not really going to be very rich people. They are actually going to be people who are going to be living in an uh, in income bracket, which is going to be probably less than $2 a day. And that's what we are really talking about. And that too on purchasing bar parity. Say in a country, country like India, they could actually be living at rupees 11 rupees a day or something. Uh, that is absolutely nothing. So when we actually have to try to talk about solutions, then we have to talk, look at this issue as well. We cannot actually give solutions which are going to be running on iPods. Uh, because iPod in itself, there is a huge entry barrier to that itself because it's a bloody expensive product. Uh, you're talking about a $600 product in a country like India. So if, what, what we are really saying is for a uh, person who's actually making money, which is just about close to, wherein the per capita income is, say, about $1,000, you cannot actually sell a uh, product which is going to be about $600, and then you're actually going to build a whole mechanism around it, or you're actually going to build a whole ecosystem around it. So the ecosystem that we need to build is going to be hugely different. Uh, very simply put, when we actually talk about, issues of or talk about issues of competitiveness, what does it really mean? We are saying that how well we can actually use our resources. How, what is the value that we are able to extract out of the resources that we have? It's about productivity of resources. It's about getting the maximum out of things that we invest in. A very simple thing, if you really talk about is pollution. What is pollution at the end of the day? It's about underutilization of my resources. I've not really used my fuel well and so on and so forth. Uh, but now the question is, if, I, if I'm actually talking about resources, if I'm talking about value, how do I enhance value? Uh, what are the basic pillars which are really going to enhance value for me? There are four different sets of pillars that we really need to talk about. One is going to be the factor conditions, the land, labor, and capital. The next is going to be the demand conditions in terms of like what are the market opportunities that actually exist. A very simple thing in India or in a country like, say, Bangladesh or Pakistan or Africa or whatever, the opportunities are going to be humongous, but they're actually going to be a bottom of the pyramid opportunities. They're not actually going to be at the top. When I actually talk about bottom of the pyramid opportunities, I'm going to talk about, say, price points. Uh, in a country like India, telecom has done exceptionally well, but it did very well when the prices actually got down. In fact, very simply put, the price per call per minute in India today is close to about 10 paisa per minute, sorry, uh, 1 paisa per second. That means it's about 50 paisa a minute. That's about 1 50th of a dollar. Uh, at, uh, that is the price of a call per minute. So we are talking about a hugely different paradigm in terms of like how economics is actually going to work there. It's actually going to be about aggregation of demand. Can we actually create models which are going to talk about aggregation of demand? It's not going to be about one single person. It's not going to be a huge price point. So simply put, so if we, how do we really do this? Uh, what are the next steps that the world will actually have to take? Is it going to be something with the, which the government will have to do, or is it going to be the corporate world which will have to do it? From a simple, it's not going to be a simple solution. It's not going to be that it's going to be a corporate folk who's actually going to come up there and do something which is going to be dramatic. It has to be an aggregation, or it has to be a conglomeration of two sets of people. That is going to be the private sector and the public sector. It has to be a public-private partnership mode, wherein what happens is that you have to actually look at solutions which are wherein all the people actually come together. Uh, in fact, a very simple set of statistics here. If you really talk about the traffic problem in India, uh, the average speed of traffic in a place like Delhi is 14 kilometers per hour. Uh, I do not know how many of you have been to Delhi, uh, but I'm sure Susan has been there and she has actually experienced the traffic jams that actually happen there. When you're talking about 15 kilometers or 14 kilometers per hour as the average speed, you're talking about a huge productivity loss. And when I actually talk about this productivity loss, I'm talking about an economic loss which is absolutely gargantuan. Uh, in terms of, say, recently, we had huge level of rains in Delhi, and there was a traffic, or Delhi actually ended up into a gridlock of about five hours. And when we actually have this gridlock, that means nothing moved. You just actually were on a standstill. Uh, 
are we really talking about them? Because if you really talk about this urban mobility solutions, the issue is like you're going to have great infrastructure around the place. We have to start looking at it from a very different hat. It, you have to say that, okay, the infrastructure is the way it is. Can we actually motivate people to go on to different mechanisms to travel? Can we actually live or go beyond the idea of uh, income levels or the levels of like how we are actually in a hierarchical society in a country like India? Can we go beyond these hierarchical systems? Because if you really talk about a thing like a car, car is actually a, a reflection of your income or a reflection of your ability to buy or something of that sort. It's, e it's an ego-expressive product. So when it becomes an ego-expressive product in a country like India, it's going to be hugely difficult for you to really get into things which are going to be shared transportation. We have not been able to get people onto the, uh, what do you call, bus system in Delhi. We have not been able to uh, get rich people to go on the tram system in Delhi. Of course, the metro is a great example in Delhi, but we have not been able to get the rich onto that system. So that means we are actually going to be facing a hugely different problem. The nature, is, the nature of problem is very, very different from what the nature of problem is here. Uh, in, in terms of, say, when I actually talk about this whole huge issue of gridlocks, uh, what does it actually do? We cannot actually just say that urban transportation solution is going to be one single thing in one single bracket. Because if we start looking at this whole huge problem in a silo, we will not be able to find some good answers. Uh, if you really talk about this traffic problem, there, there's an allied thing that happens. In fact, for a person to go to a hospital, it takes about two hours in a country, in a place like Delhi, after a heart attack to reach a hospital. So two hours for a ho to go to a hospital. Uh, if you're actually living in a village, it takes you about five hours to go to a hospital. That means we have to actually tackle this problem by looking at the whole problem, or about the whole canvas. It cannot be done with one single canvas. It cannot be, when you're actually talking about, say, issues like cloud computing and things, and we are talking about the data in terms of cloud, in fact, there was a fantastic presentation. Uh, but then if we have to actually build it up to the concept of how India can actually use it, can we actually build a model which is probably going to be a value-added service-based, which is probably SMS-based, because that's going to be much cheaper? Can we actually look at a situation wherein companies like, say, Nokia or so on and so forth can actually come into the market and say that we are actually going to give you a device which is going to be hugely cheaper than what we are really mentioning right now? So the question is going to be that, as a standalone thing, it will not work. It has to be a thing wherein people across the board and companies across the board will have to come together and find answers here. Uh, a very simple thing in terms of, say, how mobile devices could be used is, like, can I actually say that I'm going to use it for medical systems? Can I actually use it for transportation? Can I actually use it for education? And so on and so forth. In, in fact, in India, the problem is about, uh, it's a huge problem in terms of a, exactly in terms of, say, the, the idea of education. Fifty, uh, if you really look at the data from the government, uh, we have a huge problem in terms of, say, the literacy rate.